Hi there, this is Jennifer Carter. I am here to chat about the prom dress giveaway with Bill. Thanks so much for having me. Well, it is an extreme pleasure. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to all of the Newport this week, readers and now viewers as well. So th this program is, you know, it's really touching. And obviously what it does is it, it, it kind of elevates the opportunity for students that may not otherwise have an opportunity to get a prom dress. I mean, that's in a nutshell what it is. Talk about the history of the program because you've been at this for a while and what it's meant to you and why you continue to pursue this project. Uh, so I think it started about 10 years ago. I, I do school pictures and so I've been involved in the community for a while. Um, and there were a bunch of dresses that were just sitting around for like 20 years. And we're talking like, think about your bridesmaids dresses that you would have worn 30 years ago. Like they were really out of style and they were just kind of sitting there. No one had done anything with it for a while. And so we just sort of picked it up and decided we were going to start doing this. Um, you know, I work with a number of school districts, but specifically in Newport, there's about 65% of the population that gets free lunch. And so there's definitely a financial need um, for kids that don't have it. I've had kids say to me, like, I can't pay the $10 for my graduation photo. Can I pay you in three weeks? So there's definitely a need um, for us to provide dresses when we can. Um, and so it's been a really nice uh, program. We've partnered with a lot of other people that also need dresses. And so it's not just me, it's not just for Rogers, it's for any kids that wanna come pick out a dress and have a prom to go to. Um, we also partner with uh, the folks that do a night to shine, which is basically a prom for handicapped kids or a formal event for handicap 14 and up actually. So it's all ages. And so we partnered with them so they can also use the collection of dresses that we have um, and it's nice to see, I think, you know, we open it up on a couple of days a year for kids to come, but we also, I often will get requests and I welcome those requests from teachers, administrators, um, guidance counselors that will reach out to me like three days before looking for a dress for a kid that didn't come because they just really need one. And those are the kids that I think it's so nice to help out, you know, cause you know, they actually need it. Um, but we do open it up for two days. Uh, we are open. January 11th, which is kind of for the Night to Shine folks, but kids are welcome to come as well. I don't find a lot of kids come in January because they're not thinking about the prom yet. So we open it again February 16th, which is closer to when they start shopping for a dress and start thinking about those things. Um, we really want to get the message out to the schools, to you know, the community about, about uh, the dress event. So I don't know if you have specific questions you wanted me to answer or... Well, that, that's a great summary. So reading from uh, Phil Colazino's story in, in Newport this week, the donations will be dispersed, as you said, on those dates, Wednesday, January 11th and Thursday, February 16th from 1 to 6 p.m. at the Newport Elks Lodge. And then attendees can try on and receive a free prom dress or gown, you know, along with jewelry, accessories. This is kind of a wraparound experience, so to speak. You know, it's not just like, all right, come, you know, there's a box of things, pick something out. It's like you get that full experience of getting prepared for uh, these galas, essentially, which are major right. milestones in kids' lives. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we want them to come as if they're kind of going shopping for a dress. So we do have the kids try on the dress. We want to make sure what they take is going to fit them, that they're happy with it, and they are able to take the dress home with them, you know, that day. We have volunteers, and we're always looking for volunteers to help out, to help them, like, take the dresses off the racks, re-rack them, hang them back up, find ones that might fit. We have sort of a random assortment of, we have some new dresses and then we have some that have probably been worn one time. I would say that's the biggest thing I see is that people will wear a dress one time and then they donate it because they're not gonna wear it again because we all know there's like photographic evidence of you wearing this dress everywhere. So like, you're not gonna likely wear it again. So it's great to get those donations. Um, that's part of what I would like to hit on today is that we really need donations of current style dresses because I would say the style changes every like three years you know it changes fairly rapidly and we've just been through a phase with COVID that we had collected a lot of stuff there were no real proms um you know there's been a few recent more there's been a couple in the last couple of years but the couple of years we had none and so we didn't have the collection going on either of getting newer dresses so some of our stuff is sort of aged out of being in style for the kids. So the type of things that we look for would be like 
dresses that are worn to a gala event. If you're an adult, you might go to a gala event. You'd probably wear your dress once and then you're probably not going to wear it again. So we take those types of donations. Sometimes bridesmaids dresses also look similar to the prom gowns. So those types of things, if they've been worn in the last two or three years are great donations for us too. Um, yeah, I mean, you're unique with, uniquely qualified for this because you're a photographer and specifically you work with a lot of proms, a lot of school portraits. So you're embedded in the community in a way that, I don't know, it just seems like a, like a, a natural fit for you. So what is this program, how, what does it mean to you? Because it seems to me that it's, you know, you're you're in front of so many students, so many teenagers, so many kids that are going through these milestone moments with proms or a night to shine, whatever it is. And you saw a need is what my, I'm kind of answering the question for you, but I sense that you saw a need and this was a really organic process that you said, Hey, we've got to close this gap. And I guess I'm going to do it. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. yeah I mean, I think exactly. I mean, we saw a bunch of dresses sitting around. We knew nobody was really doing it locally and there was definitely a need. I mean, seeing kids coming to me saying they can't afford their one graduation picture for 10 bucks, you know, uh, that the fact that the district has 65% of these kids receiving a free lunch, there's definitely a need. It's expensive. The prom gowns can, you know, range from, you know, two to $300. And that's just the first part of the expenses of these kids attending the prom. Um, and, you know, it, it's nice for them to have that opportunity because a lot of times kids are very self-conscious at that age. Teenagers are, you know, they're very self-conscious and they want to feel like they fit in with their peers and they're not going to just go in something that they pulled out of their closet. And so they don't end up having that experience if they weren't provided a dress. So Definitely. Think, you know, yeah. that's why we decided to start doing it. Well, it's a really beautiful program. So for anybody out there who wants to make a donation, are you accepting anything beyond dresses? In other words, are you accepting any sort of monetary donations to purchase dresses or are you looking basically for, um, you know, just the wardrobe itself and the accessories? Yeah, we, we will take all sorts of donations. We've had people go out and buy dresses and then donate them. We've had people donate money for us to provide, you know, to buy the dresses, to pay for dry cleaning. There's a lot of expenses that kind of go along with it. And we've done other fundraisers in the past to help fund this and, you know, a portion of it to fund this. Um, but we, we definitely use all sorts of donations. I mean, we take shoes, we take jewelry, and we take dresses for the most part of their current style. Um, we obviously would take a monetary donation and apply it to the whole, the event as a whole to make sure the kids are getting what they need. And one last time, where can people make that donation either in person or if they want to make a monetary donation is there a way they can do it remotely? Yeah, they could definitely make a donation remotely. Um, they can contact me and I give out my cell phone to everyone. I do prefer people to text me rather than leaving voicemails so I can just write them back. So um, I think my number is in the article, but it's uh, 401-837-0554. You're welcome to text me there. And I'll, I usually ask people like, okay, where are you located? And they'll tell me Port Smith, Tiverton, Newport. And I'll say, okay, you can drop it off at this location. And we, I have a lot of friends that have shops and different things, and they will take the donations during normal business hours so that it's convenient for people. So we try to match them with a spot to drop it off that works for them based on where they live or where they work. Um, is kind of how we do it rather than having to meet in a parking lot at a specific time. It gives them a, like an easier opportunity to drop stuff off. Jennifer Carter, bring happiness and comfort to a lot of people that, you know, on a level that may be overlooked, but I'm sure is extremely important to a lot of, a lot of young people in our community. So thanks for your work. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate you doing this. This is great. I, I find the article, I've been getting more calls and I'm sure this is going to help us get more donations, addresses and things as well. So thank you so much. Of course.